my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me, Mark from Dadex, and you find us today in a Gamur, a Mordu ship, a frigate, and we're just cruising around going to hideaways and such, and when we find a hideaway we can just sit here and one-shot everything, it's all very passive and very nice, and we might get an escalation. Anyway, you've not seen me fly many faction ships, and the Gamur is one I've got, I've got it because it was free. Now we've mentioned Mordu and you've seen Mordu in previous videos but I thought we'd just do a quick video just covering the three kinds of Mordu that can spawn on the low sec asteroid belts. There's the Gamur, this one right here, the Frigate, there's the Orpheus, a cruiser and there's the Bargest, a battleship. And they're worth 50 million, 200 million and 600 million ish each and that is just for the blueprints basically when you kill the mordu on the belt it will drop a blueprint copy a one run copy for itself and they are worth incredibly good money you could choose to build them i don't know if there's much profit in building them because the materials are the difference between the price you're gonna pay for a built hole and the price you're gonna pay for a blueprint copy to build one yourself so anyway in terms of a, a nice cash injection, these really are the creme de la creme of the low sec community. Not talked about too much, maybe they're kept as a secret, I don't know. There are ways to encourage them to spawn, I'll talk about that in a little while, but they're quite a rare spawn. You see this Gamur's worth 60 mil and the hull is worth 50 mil. So a little bit of an extravagant build to be sat on a hideaway, one shot in rats in. But since it was free, why not? Now, to be honest, these Mordu ships really come into their own in the realm of PvP rather than PvE. We'll look at that and explain why when we look at their stats. Okay, so here we are back in the hangar. Let's have a quick look at the ship tree to learn more about the Mordu ships. They come in three sizes, as you can see. There's the Gamur, the one we've just been in. I don't need both those info screens open. Oh, somebody asked in a comment, you can just select in the settings so that each time you click on info, you get a new window. Or you can shift click to do it manually. Anyway, the Mordu ships are all about their warp disruption ranges and their missile damage and their ranges. So that's what they're all bonus for. The Gamur costs about 50 million. As you can see, for each level of Galante Frigate, you're getting a 10% bonus to Scrambler and Disruptor range. Kaldari Frigate skill. Each level gives you a 25% bonus to missile damage. The roll bonus is a 200% bonus to missile velocity. So they go um, three times as fast as normal. They do have the 50% penalty to missile flight time. So they don't fly for as long. So I think if I do the maths roughly in my head, that kind of doubles the range and they get there quicker, which can make the difference in PVP. And these are really quite PvP orientated ships because of the bonuses, because they don't really apply very well to rats, do they? Right, the Orpheus, the cruiser size, same kind of bonuses, a little bit less, 10% bonus to your scrambler and disruptor range per level of uh, Galante cruiser. Kaldari cruiser skill gives us 15% bonus to missile damage per skill level. And again, the same bonuses to missile velocity, 200% bonus and a 50% penalty to missile flight time. Then the big boy. And just actually, we didn't check. View market details. The Orpheus is currently selling for 220 million. And then the Barguest. Again, similar pattern to the bonuses. 10% bonus to the ranges on your disruptor and your scrambler for the Galante battleship. Kaldari battleship skills. Give you a 10% bonus to your missile damage and the same roll bonuses that are going to give you the missile range and missile speed bonuses and they currently sell for let's have a look 970 million that's a lot of isk so how do we get these how do we get these for free that's what we want to know that's what we're going to look at today we may look at the use and application of these ships in future videos but for now, let's see how we can get some and where to find them first. Now you may have seen this footage before, but this is me in a caracal with the Alpha with Tech 1 rapid light missile launchers, which I've overheated. I'm doing my absolute best. But basically every time I hit the reload, this guy is just 
repping all of the damage that I've done. I cannot break his tank. I'm not going to break his tank. I'm not dead. I'm not stuck in the fight. Even though these guys can all disrupt out to 35 kilometers, you just fly away. You burn out. So, Tech 2 rapid light missile launchers, on the other hand, with rage missiles. Now, this is an Alpha. This is Anthrax. But Fintrash has done this as well in his Tech 2 Caracal. Although the DPS is quite a bit lower for an Alpha just because of some of the skills that you can't learn. But you can just about make it with a Tech 2 Alpha Caracal. And I will make a point, as I'll discuss in a little while, my next mission for Fintrash is going to be to see how far and what ships he can use to hunt down some Mordus this week. Anyway, as you can see, this one just breaks his tank, no problem. We are overheating but we're not overheating uh, in a dangerous way, you know, we can take it easy. Remember, we're always aggressing these rats on low sec belts, so you want to be very careful about who's around and what's around. The last thing you need is somebody landing on grid with you when you're already pointed by the rat and quite a dangerous rat at that. Now, the other thing to bear in mind with these um, guys is that they can hit you out to a very, very long range. The Orpheus, for instance, has got 168 kilometer range on his missiles. So do bear that in mind. If you're thinking about trying to kite them in some kind of glass cannon, the Gamur will hit you to about 110 kilometers at least. Might even be a little bit more, but there you go. We've got this Gamur. Tech 2 rapid light missiles for the win. 50 mil in the bag. Thank you very much, low sec. I'll take it. Now I'm out ratting here in a ham fit caracal. And we found an Orpheus, and this is really another demonstration of how powerful their tank is, because this Alpha Ham Orpheus, I've only got Tech 1 Ham launchers, heavy assault missiles, and Alpha could train Tech 2 heavy assault missiles. The problem is, a bit like heavy missile launchers, if I were to fit those into the ship, it would really wreck the rest of the fit. I'd have nothing left for tank. It is a possibility, I guess, in some specialist situations, but um, no, it's I'll make do. But here you can see that Fintrash in his Ham Caracal, which isn't a bad little ship, to be honest. It's got about 360 DPS, and obviously it hasn't got the uh, reload of the rapid light missile launchers. You've just got to get in close and kind of whack them, but we, uh, we like flying that way anyway. So as you can see here, I'm not really in too much danger of like dying really quickly. And I do have the option here, if I once I know it's going to be a no-go on killing it, just to turn around, light up the micro walk drive and burn away. Get out of his disruption range, about 36 kilometers should do it, and uh, off we go. And in fact, I get to the point where I, that is exactly what I start doing. Now, my friend and I had already poked around at another Mordu earlier. But uh, we've decided that I, I think he's in the Celestis. He lands on grid at some stage, I think. Takes the aggro, so it makes it even easier for me to get away. But uh, we're not going to take down this Orpheus. We're not equipped. So my little mission, as I mentioned, particularly with the Orpheus, is to see if I can find a ship and a fit that the Alpha can solo an Orpheus, a Mordu Belt Orpheus, in. Now, if you guys have got any suggestions, I would happily hear those in the Discord, in the comments, or on the Facebook. I'm going to be much more active on those social media, guys. Um, the last month between uh, my mother being very ill uh, at death's door, basically, and uh, me waiting for some test results to let me know uh, if I had the same kind of cancer that killed my big brother, and luckily I don't. So anyway... I've been a bit preoccupied is my point, but uh, we're back on message and we're back on form, hopefully. I'm here in a cormorant, it's Finn Trash in the cormorant, and we've landed on a bar guest. Now, the point of this little clip is to show that in my little ship, I can stay out quite a long range. He's not going to apply damage to me very well, especially if I keep the micro warp drive going. It's very important to keep these guys on grid if you can when you find them and call in somebody to come and uh, help you kill it. By the time you reship, quite often they'll have warped off. They may have gone to another belt in the system and you can bounce around looking for them. They may have just disappeared. And uh, again, just to remind you, we're in low sec. You don't want to be spending too much time mucking about. And especially when it comes to killing these bar guests. 
If you're going to get out and do that, and they're quite tanky monsters, we'll talk about the killing in more detail. Yet far as you can see is out in the Hyperion, which you have seen in a video before. It might have even been this particular one. But I just wanted to make the point that if you're in a small ship, you can buzz around them. I've done this in the Tristan and kept a battleship on grid for about 10 minutes while somebody reshipped. I did it then by warping backwards and forwards across the belt between the furthest uh, um, apart asteroids. So, you know, warp across, take a couple of hits, warp back. It just keeps that guy aggroed on you and interested so he doesn't disappear and somebody can come and kill it. So, yeah. You might die, but I'm in a little cormorant. I'm going to get my cut for finding him because uh, nice pilots give a cut to find a fee, especially if you're taking the trouble to pin it on grid, I should think. I'm just going to go back now, see if I can get some more damage on the rat. Maybe I can claim a bigger share. And also, of course, if he's aggroed on me, he's not aggroed on the guy that's going in there to actually do the damage. So um, it all makes everything a little bit easier for everybody. Just be careful. The, the battleships can hit out to 395 kilometers, I have read. So um, just bear that in mind. Again, you're not going to kite these guys and take no damage. It's just not going to happen. That's not how they work at all. You really need to get in there and kill them really, really quickly. And this Hyperion fit that we're going to look at in a little bit more detail soon certainly does take them down very, very quickly. And the quicker you can do it and get away, the better. But you can make a contribution if you're in a small ship, if you find it. Try to keep it on grid, stay on grid with it and call somebody else. Once somebody else maybe comes in and takes the aggro, maybe you go and reship. It can just save having to search around. There's nothing more frustrating than having seen a big juicy rat going to reship. Coming back and being completely unable to find the thing again. Now, of course, another way to speed things up. And uh, this was my first ever time flying this fit. Um, Dex, yep, far, came up with the fit. Or, well, he found the fit, used the fit, gave me the fit. So I've come out to join him. And two is always better than one anyway. Because you're going to kill it in half the time. And there's enough loot here to go round, bear in mind. We're looking at 300 mil each, even if we go halveses. So um, that's pretty good. Get in, kill it, and get out. This is one of the rats you quite often see when somebody's trying to solo, or tried, I should say, to solo one of these because the kill mails show on the kill board if the more do get you. So if you find one, it takes you by surprise a bit. Call in friends. You can see here while this ship, the bar guest, is known, oh, well, I think it looks more like a dust pan than a frying pan. <laughs> but uh, the two Hyperions are eating that one up very quickly, very nicely. Thank you very much. And you'd be pleased to hear that that one bar guest has pretty much paid for both of these Hyperions and their fits. Give or take a, maybe 100 mil on each ship. But these fits cost about 400 mil. So the first bar guest you get with it, you're 50% in profit already. And then you know me and the ships that have already paid for themselves. They've become a little bit disposable. Right, now... This next segment is all on a lunch break. Um, just a few days ago on Wednesday, I believe it was, I logged in, had a quick look around. I'm actually on my laptop here, which is why the resolution is in probably about the worst I could possibly get it in. But bear with me, it's worth seeing because I'm going to land in here. You can see <laughs> my modules are already slightly burnt from the last time I've been out. I've spotted him while I was out hopping belts in the Dragoon and I've reshipped very hastily because, as I said, these guys can just disappear. But I'm only going to use the blasters. I'm not going to put the drones out. You're going to see how quickly, if you get into your optimal, you keep your tracking nice, how quickly this Hyperion will punch down this bar guest and how well we tank. What is quite a ferocious amount of incoming damage. To be honest with you, you can see the numbers in the screen. Just watch the nice hits we get in. Nice and consistent damage. And uh, yeah, typical me is also hitting the ancillary armor repper for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But at least only let it run for one cycle. But the armor hardener's on. You can't really go wrong with that on. I've got no cap issues here. But if you just watch the blue numbers, my hits on him up there in the middle of the screen... 
you can see that they do gradually increase as I get in a little bit closer because I'm not even within my optimal at the moment for the void ammo. So I'm going to get a little bit closer on him. Once I'm within my optimal, I'm going to give him some beautiful big whaps of damage. That 1700 that hit. I haven't even put my web on him, and that would obviously be uh, probably increasing our application by slowing down the target. The incoming damage, very, very manageable. You know, I'm not really needing to rep too much at all here. The armor hardener is coping with it. The more do only put out kinetic damage. They're only shooting missiles at you, scourge missiles, I would therefore guess. So as long as you've got your armor resistances switched to kinetic or your shield resistances, etc., then you'll be fine. If you're going to build a purpose-built ship, which these Hyperions pretty much are only used to run out and smack these Mordu in the face. But now his shield's gone, we're just going to chew through him very, very nicely. And I'm getting beautiful damage application all the way through, just with the blasters. And uh, you know how clumsy I usually am. <laughs> But it all went well. And while I'm doing this, there is actually a mining op going on in the other half of this solar system. I'm off of their D-scan and therefore obviously they're off of mine. But I have wondered if somebody's going to come and join me. I wouldn't have minded. But now that I've got that Mordu, Special Warfare Unit, Commander, to give him his full title. But all three of them are Commanders, which seems a bit odd. There's no rank to the size of the ship. But now I've got this guy in the bag. I'll get this put away safely. And there you go, a 600 mil loot drop in the bag, and we're only five minutes into lunch break. Anyway, as I mentioned, there was this mining fleet going on in the other half of the solar system, and I thought I'd pop up in my long-range caracal and just see, just to wind them up. I know they've got a couple of T3 cruisers out here to defend. They've got a caracal out, I think, as well. I wish there were some mates around. But of course, these guys are mining at a time when in Nola there's not going to meet many people around. It's part of the plan. So I'm just going to lock up some coveters and see what I can do. I should be able to hit these guys out to about 70 odd kilometers. So uh, the thing I misjudge here is the flight time of the missiles. I shoot too many missiles at the first coveter and uh, I therefore hit my reload and can't take down the second coveter before these guys start to get their act together. Um, they must figure out which ping it is because I'm sure they should have pings around their own mining op to, to come out and put some pressure on me which they finally do I think the Tengu comes out after me uh, so I just make my excuses and leave but I've just made my presence felt said hello I mean you can't have a mining op in low sec without uh, somebody coming and chucking missiles at you it just wouldn't be very much fun would it so yeah always take the opportunity to introduce yourself to new friends that's what i say there you go the there's the, the demonic rapid light launcher recharge and there's the tengu coming out after me so uh yeah i'm just gonna head off i did think about jumping in here in some uh bigger ship and just muck about just for lols especially as i've just made 600 mil already but okay. um I get a little bit distracted from making my plans against the mining optus up here, you know, because when I'm bouncing around the belts, just uh, scoping them out, you never guess what, I find another bar guest. Now, I've edited the fight here a little bit. You will be seeing more of this fight another time because I've kind of, I had such good damage application in that last fight when I just used the blasters and this one. I've kind of really messed myself up. There's a kind of a demonstration by burning the micro warp drive now and again as I get in close. Absolutely killing my DPS. It's a mistake I see people make quite a lot. Uh, they can uh, get in too close, mess up their own tracking and make life a lot harder for themselves. I've got the drones out now. I've got the blasters blasting. I overheat them for longer than I did the last ones and I'm having to rep. I'm having to use my cap booster and... Uh, it takes twice as long to kill the bar guest. Since I went and introduced myself to the mining fleet, they have now got five hurricanes and three tempests up there with them. Now, uh, as I'm off the D scan, as I said earlier, so obviously they're being very passive up there. I did half expect to get a little bit of a visitation and it would have been a little bit of a fun scuffle, I think. And as I say, Hyperion's paid for. But now, there's the Hyperion's more than paid for. In fact, that's three Hyperion's paid for in my lunch break. 1.2 billion isks worth of bar guests and a cheeky covet a kill. 
maybe 1.9 kills, eh? Okay, well, I suppose you'd like to know a little bit more about this fit, wouldn't you? And it's not a bad fit, it's a joke, it's a silly name. Anyway, we've got Neutron Blaster Cannon 2s up in the high slots. Six of those. In the middle there, we've got the Heavy Gremlin Compact Energy Neutralizer. Obviously, that's not much use against the bar guest, so we won't talk too much about its employment right now. We've got the Weber that we didn't use. We've obviously got a Warp Scrambler in there for a bit of tackle, should we get into a little bit of a fight. We've got the Enduring Micro Warp Drive to save on the cap if we need to burn around to control our range. We want to get in reasonably close with our blasters after all. We've got the Heavy Compact Capacitor Booster and we're running Navy Cap Booster 3200s in that bad boy. We also have the Heavy Gunner Compact Status Grappler. That's a sort of area of effect Weber for when you get mobbed by ships, which if we get into a fight is very handy. But again, bar guest, not really that useful. So um, three of these modules, well four, when we killed that first bar guest in our lunch break, four of these modules didn't actually even get used in that fight. Anyway, down the bottom, we got the large ancillary armor repairer, which you saw me test fire. We've got two magnetic field stabilizer twos to up the DPS on the blasters. We've got damage control two, We've got one multi-spectrum energized adaptive membrane. We've got the reactive armor hardener. You know I quite like those. Obviously, if we're only getting hit by kinetic damage, we're going to get up to 60% resistances there. And then over here, we've got the large armor repair at two. Putting out 1,555 hit points per cycle with the assistance of two auxiliary nano pumps in the rig slots to boost the armor repair at amount and one large ancillary current router one to give us enough power grid to fit all this good stuff in the ship as you can see here that gives us 1179.2 dps about 72,000 or 73,000 ehp plus the reps of course we in the drone bay we've got some acolytes we've got some valkyries we've got vespers we've got Whatever mix and match is best for you, there is a, an EM hole on the Mordus, they're shield tanked, so you could put in your Amar drones there to exploit that. Obviously with blasters we've got no real choice over the damage type that we're dealing. That all comes to, it says here, 429.7 mil. Probably a little bit more than that, I don't know, these, these do seem underestimated of late. But even so, when the first bar guest you take down is 600 mil, I think you'll agree. This is a bargain of a fit. I've seen some very expensive fits used to take down the bar guests. I've seen some very expensive fits die trying. Now, at the blueprints themselves, we've just gone to the industry tabs just so you can see there the figures that you're going to need. I'm not going to read through them. Basically, the value of the materials is the difference between the contract price just for selling the blueprint and for building the ship, and then the value of the ship hull if you want to sell that. Usually, the Gamers and the Orphruses we use, and the Bar Guests, well, they pay the bills. We do keep them stored for special occasions, of course. We'll maybe have a look at using the Mordu ships in another episode. We're certainly going to look at the Alphas and getting them into some faction and navy ships soon in any case. Anyway... For now guys, I hope you found this useful and entertaining. Leave us a like if you've liked it. Comment any uh, suggestions for fits that might take down that all for us. We'll give it a go. I've definitely got a fit in mind and a ship in mind. I wonder if you can guess. We'll have a look at that soon. But for now, take care of yourselves and each other. Remember, even is believing, fly brave and goodbye.